Hello everyone and welcome to Dead Space Extraction, a Dead Space spin-off originally released for the Wii and now available for the PlayStation 3 with Move and DualShock 3 support. This is an on-rails shooter, but it differs from the likes of Time Crisis mainly due to the gameplay elements it shares with the main series, which add a degree of depth to the experience you don't usually find in this type of games. For starters, each weapon has an alternative fire mode triggered by twisting the controller sideways. Here are some examples. In the case of the saw here, you can also push it back and forth and rotate it while it's spinning. Another dead space element that applies here is the stasis, which slows enemies down for a few seconds, making it easier to deal with them. Just like in dead space, the dismemberment mechanic applies here as well, so this is a pretty useful power, especially when you are fighting multiple targets simultaneously or against fast moving ones like the Reapers. Those three blue bars you see around the cursor are the stasis slots, which regenerate over time. Performed by pressing square, reloading in extraction also allows for a quick reload as well. You simply need to press square again or the main trigger while the tip of the reloading bar crosses the marker you see on the left side of the cursor. Successfully performing a quick reload doesn't grant a power shot or anything like that, but it's fundamental to survive in packed situations, especially on the higher difficulty setting. There is also a risk involved with it, as uh, failing to press the button timely results in a longer than normal reload time. By the way, you can also reload by shooting away from the screen. Just like in Dead Space, enemies can jump on you. To shake them off, you need to shake the controller and then press the move button when prompt. More shaking is involved with the other stuff like uh, charging the glowing worm, which allows to see better in the darkness. As well as performing close melee attacks. In this case you need to hold down the circle button, otherwise you just wave the on-screen cursor around. The melee is mostly used to get through fragile obstacles or to defend from uh, ballistic attacks. The kinesis power allows to pick up objects with the move button and throw them away with the trigger. This applies to everything that ain't glued to the environment, enemies, projectiles included. Kinesis serves other purposes as well, such as picking up items and opening chests. Sometimes you are also given the option to look for items around you by moving the cursor near the edge of the screen. Since there are no shops in extraction, this looting mechanic allows to pick up not just ammo but also weapon upgrades and new weapons. The whole idea of collecting stuff like this works very well and also helps in keeping you busy during the non-shooting segments. Calling to us, to death and, 
and beyond. What did you say? Uh, sorry, nothing, sir. So now that you know the basics, allow me to shut up and let some gameplay do the talking. Besides the shooting, there are some other activities you will be involved with during the game, like building barricades with a rivet gun within a time limit, which is quite generous. The rivet gun also works as a weapon with infinite ammo, by the way. Can't you go any faster? Hacking electronic panels is another non-shooting activity which requires steady hand as you hold down the move button to solder nodes together, trying not to hit anything red. It's not really a puzzle, but it's still engaging thanks to the very nature of motion controls. Shut up and let the man concentrate. Difficulty increases as you progress through the game, of course, this is an early hack. And there are also situations where you have to hack terminals while defending yourself against an infinite wave of necromorphs, switching between shooting and soldiering on the fly. Typical dead space, anti-gravity sections are also proposed in extraction, but there is nothing really special about them. To get across these areas you simply point at specific holograms and push the move button. Sometimes you have to use kinesis to clear your way, but uh, besides that these sections mostly serve as tension building tools. 
By the way, there is no oxygen depleting issue to deal with during spacewalking. A shooting segment akin to that seen in the first Dead Space is also present, but it's very simple and quite easy to get through when using the move. Finally, the prescripted path does sometimes offer the opportunity to choose between two possible routes. While they do lead to different areas, these routes are mostly short detours to the same destination and don't affect the storytelling. They are basically there to help uh, replayability if you intend to collect all the unique items in the game. Are you lost, Detective? They've been gone a while. You know, I <laughs> think I am. I'll call when I get someplace I recognize. Speaking of recognizable places, there are obviously quite a few in Extraction, since it is a close prequel to the first Dead Space. Detective, are you okay? We heard a crash. Yeah, something hit the ship. I'm alright, but the hull's breached. In fact, the game takes place literally a few hours before the arrival of Isaac Clarke on the Ishimura, and is also host to some known faces. I'm Nicole Brennan, by the way, senior medical officer. Moreover, you will also get to experience events in extraction consistent with what you get to see in Dead Space. Here you can see a couple of examples. I don't want to find out! Get to the security station. We'll barricade ourselves in. Thank God you're here! You're not gonna tase me again, are you? What are you talking about? Quit gabbing and close that door! It's jammed, sir! So, unjam it! The rest of you, grab anything that isn't nailed down and finish that barricade. McNeil, get over here and start riveting. Officer Nicole Brennan transmitting ship wide. We need more help. We... Take the power cell out of the door, it'll seal the air. Pretty cool, huh? The recently released Severed DLC for Dead Space 2 is also connected to extraction through its protagonists. Gabe, you're scaring me! Don't argue, just get to our shuttle now! This isn't happening! This can't be happening! Get out of there now! What's your name? Maxine. Okay, back to the actual gameplay. Extraction supports two players simultaneously with each move sphere matching the color of the on-screen cursor it controls. There is little special to report here, besides the fact that when dealing with the hybrid hacking segments, players have to take turns at soldiering the nose. Everybody in? Alright, going down. Extraction also includes a challenge mode which puts you against waves of necromorphs to dispatch as quickly as possible. You get to choose which weapon to bring with you besides the rivet gun and then more weapons are added to that randomly as you progress through the waves. The game of course also supports the DualShock 3, both in single and multiplayer, but do not expect to perform as well as with the move, especially when dealing with multiple enemies at higher difficulty. Another thing to mention is the reticule assist option you see here. What it does is not what you might expect. It simply makes it so that the cursor turns red whenever it hovers over an enemy or an item. A useful spotting device on a standard definition TV, not so much when playing on an HD TV because of the higher visibility. Finally, despite the game being perfectly playable with just the main move controller, you have also got the option to use the navigation controller or the DualShock 3 along with it. The analog stick does nothing, but you can press left or right on the D-pad to scroll back and forth through your weapons. Normally you press triangle on the move to select the next one. Up on the D-pad sends a stasis shot just like X, while holding down circle allows to execute a melee attack via move shaking.
The navigation trigger is used for kinesis, while L1 is for reloading. And this is it. If you are curious about how this version of Extraction compares to the original Wii One, just hit the link above. Thanks for watching, ciao! Taking your time, McNeil. Why do they have to make them so damn tight? Punches.